And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for our next Rank Up Sunday deck. We're going to be retrying Riven Taric, as y'all remember. We played this the first day, first deck, whenever we had uh, the new expansion with Aphelios that just came out. And it did really well. We went 5-0 and with it. Um, I'm not expecting to go 5-0 and again. You know, 5-0 is really difficult. But the, one of the reasons why we went 5-0 with it was it was like immediately right after the new cards came out. So a lot of people were just kind of playing a bunch of the new cards and not really having too cohesive of decks yet. So it was, um, you know, we're going to we're going to face some better, tougher decks this time, I think. But still, with that being said, I really like the synergy between these two champions with um, Riven making these all these blade fragments that are going to be really cheap burst spells, which is good for whenever you have Taric because you want to uh, target your allies or support them seven plus times to level up your Taric. Um, but of course, you really want to be able to play stuff before attacking so you can copy it over. And now the Blade of the Exile just costs one mana, so it makes it really easy to even just, you know, go Blade of the Exile on the Taric, attack with the Taric, copy over Blade of the Exile, and then still have extra mana because it only costs one, so you can still have, like, you know, Might, Bastion, Transfusion, Pale Cascade, whatever else available. Um, Blade Squire also now playable. Definitely really helps the deck. Um, a lot of times, like, maybe we, like, play a one-drop, save our two spell mana for, like, Pale Cascade or Transfusion, play, like, a three-drop, like, Iron Blister or Riven, and then play Taric, and then use our Pale Cascade mana. That's, um, you know, play, that's kind of, like, the, the dream curve. We also have Legion Drummer supporting in here with Quick Attack. We have Glory Seeker challenging. Um, so we got some good, useful stuff there. So let's give it a try. Again, Riven, Taric. Let's see how it does. Aphelios Yasuo. So the thing about our deck is we do want to like buff up our units and you know make them like real big with Overwhelm. That's that's kind of what our deck's all about. Um, so. I assume that a Yasuo deck is going to have a lot of stun cards, and they'll be able to stun during combat, and so that's not really that great for us, um, because it doesn't matter if you make your your uh, unit really large. If they just stun it, then you know that's it. You know, <laughs> you know, it's not like you can use a transfusion or a pill cascade to protect from a stun. Join the hunt of this. Okay, well this is. This is our ideal hand that I talked about. We don't have the attack token on turn four, though. But if we did have the attack token on turn four, it would be perfect. The past is a burden we must learn to bear. Definitely considering considering playing the ballista, but with this extra protection, and everything. I'm gonna just go with the. Uh, ribbon. No more hesitation. Embrace the need, Aphelios. Glory Seeker. Crescendo. I broke from my past, but I still can't find peace. There is nothing so broken it cannot be mended. So yeah, so they'll get they'll get the two drop plus the <clears throat> Okay, or they'll just get two 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 drops, so they get two eye the dragons, so now that they both get draglings. Oh man, Aphelios. <laughs> Aphelios moon, moon weapon's not very fair, but yep. I guess he gets to do that. What is gained when you return malevolence? I think what I my my plan here is to try to have Glory Seeker challenge the Aphelios. I think that's that's what my plan's going to be. And so I'm kind of throwing down this ballista. You know, see what they do. See if they spend some other card that doesn't stop this. Like that. Victory requires a sharp blade. So we know they're gonna have the stun stun next. So if they have a burst spell, they get to just play the burst spell. 
and then grab the stun card and then stun and level up Aphelios. Okay, so not a stun card. Or not not the not the burst spell, but Shatter them. Never submit. So now they can just block with the draglings, but this gets Terek to be three out of seven. I also draw two cards. Yeah, and there's Steel Tempest. <clears throat> so that should be game over. We'll, we'll see. I don't. I don't envision us beating Aphelios. Card is just too good. It's already given them. <laughs> Aphelios has already given them all this. Yeah, Aphelios is kind of crazy. I mean, it's the reason why you know, it's rank up Sunday. We're playing two Aphelios decks. I would, you know, like, yeah, it's it's the best card in the game. Yeah, so, yes, the... Yes, I know, yeah, it would have survived the Steel Tempest. Um, but then it would also, you know, be stunned. Anyway. Like, so, like, it, it wouldn't... It wouldn't have killed the Aphelios. They didn't, they didn't play another spell. No draglings. No draglings. How about that? I need to just d diversify my threats with them, you know, being a, a deck with tons of stun and everything. Um, I could have leveled up the Taric first so that it would be the can't take damage or die on these, but like, it's a it's okay for that not to be like. A, if I would put like the, the Kato first, then if I would use like these things, but I want to have the transfusion available. If only we could play these during combat, and I could give the Riven Overwhelm. That's not how those work. Homecoming is too cute. Like, I wonder if they're playing Homecoming instead of Will of Ionia. Like, just, like, looking at, like, there, like, Will of Ionia would have been a lot better. They would have had both their Eye of the Dragon still in play. And, yeah, they would have had one less mana, but... Um, so they wouldn't have played this thing, but... They would have been able to keep both their Eye of the Dragons in play. What is gained when we return Malevolence? I haven't seen any spots like where I'm really impressed with that card quite yet. Homecoming compared to Will of Ionia. Carry your own gear. 
Is that all you got? I'm going to be playing all these other attackers before I attack the next turn. I'm not open attacking. They should have plenty of answers and stun cards and stuff like that. I think I need to get more threats. So, like, so I'm thinking, you know, Ballista, Rune Weaver, Legion Drummer. All of those. I mean, yet again, if they would, you know, if they just have Will of Ionia, they would again, you know, be able to have both Eye of the Dragons in play right now. Yeah, you know, they could have gone Will of Ionia, then play the other one, but. Aphelios obviously ended this game a long time ago, but we're we're trying. Yeah. Yeah, this game was over on turn th turn four. I guess is really when the game ended. Alright, maybe they don't have two. Okay, what do we have? So you need overwhelm also. Do we have two quick attacks? Okay, yeah, you can both have quick attack. Helios is broken. Alright, so we have a chance. It's not a Helios. So we got a chance. Let's keep the Culling Strike as something that can answer the Zoe, and we're going to mulligan the other two. Um, the Blade Squire is good, you know, like with the last breath of Forge, everything. It, it isn't always the best with transfusion that can be offered at times you know, transfusion can be with I, I do have a lot of one health units in general and here's where I paint my constellation Ooh, that's new which is how how would should you balance Aphelios? Um, yeah, the the current card, and yeah, you said, yeah, the current card is is certainly way too strong. It's it's much better than anything else in Legends of Runeterra. It's having options between five cards, and then you know you just keep on getting more and more and more moon weapons, and, and you just keep on getting options of two. It's just it's it's just absurd. Uh, but how do you make that? 
Okay, so I know I could attack and pill cascade, but I, I want to save pill cascade for Tarek so we can draw multiple cards. But anyway, how do you balance that? Basically, you have to cut down on, on the card advantage and card selection that it brings. Both of those. Also, it's a three mana three three. You know, maybe like, you know, Twisted Fate, it, it's a better card than Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate's a four mana two two. You know, like maybe, maybe if you, you know, like Heimerdinger, a five mana one three. You know, like maybe it needs to cost more mana, be smaller. All that kind of stuff also. I bring clarity. And yeah, the, the moon weapons don't need to be as good as they are. I'm not sure why all, like the moon weapons are above the curve. But that doesn't need to be the case. So there are tons of things you can do to make the card more uh, this is rather more dumb. balanced. So I want to play something before Pale Cascade. I am envisioning Hush plus, you know, like maybe they go like Hush plus Pale Cascade, Sharp Sight, that kind of stuff. By playing by playing the two drop instead of a three drop, I you know I have double spell available. I wanted I wanted to keep that, so I didn't want to play the Iron Ballista. I wanted to be able to have double spell. Good card, good card. Meteor shower, good card. Good. Spill paint is just accidental art. I'm cold, I'm hungry, and there's rocks in me. Yeah, Crescendum tutoring up exact two drops and putting them into play doesn't make much sense. Like, even if that was, even if it was just. These are just gonna have to trade. Even if it was just like draw the two drop, that would even make like a little bit more sense. But putting it directly into play for cheaper than the normal cost, you know, two spell mana is cheaper than two regular mana. It'd make more sense to just put a one drop, in, you know, like for, for it being two spell mana and then it puts a one a one mana unit into play. That, that would make more sense than a two mana unit. We're gonna give this plus two plus zero. We're gonna give it gonna give it a quick attack. Oh, but then this is thing's only gonna be a six one. So do I want them to be able to block a six one? I guess there's not really reason to let them just block like they're not gonna block that seven four either either way. So it's just, do I want to just throw away uh, the Rune Weaver to do, you know, to turn this into being an eight-two? And the answer is probably no. Speak, stars. Speak, I say. So this was not the one, yeah, that was not the one that the Fang created. The Fang, the one that the Fangs created was over here. The old tongues are spoken in blood.
like that. No, I don't like that. I like that. Go get him, Captain. Rather the <clears throat> oh, darn. I was gonna say I'd rather the hush get used there than like on like a rune weaver later, but um, this looks pretty good for them. Both those hushes, you know, they've had they had two hushes. They're both pretty good. Against some Twisted Fate, so it's not Targon. I welcome any non Targon deck. We're gonna just start with the Blade Squire, look for our champions. Okay. I guess we'll start with some soldiers. Do I want to immediately attack or play Iron Ballista? I mean, I think Iron Ballista. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why playing Iron Ballista first would be bad. Can't think of anything with like PNC Bilgewater. Yeah, you could have like some treasure or something. All unbelievers will see the light. Devotion to battle. It's a strong iterative improvement. Right predictions. Yeah, petty officer. Follow the horizon. So I get four damage on them. Punish transgressions. Yeah. The guilty will bear. Should be Twisted Fate. Oh, never mind. So we're doing fine. You know, like they, you know, just have one card in a Daring Poro left. So we're doing fine. What time is it? Right, 
So that thing will block Kato. Victory requires a sharp blade. Okay. Not a bad draw. So we know the middle card is a spell that costs three or less. I'm always up for a round or two. Ah, oh, it's a Poro Cannon. Not a very good spell. I'm a people person. Down to two. It's refreshing to not play against Tarkon. <laughs> it's refreshing. Yeah, yeah, I assume they're playing Purple Fish. I think that's a fair assumption. Don't worry. I am here. I'm not worried. Should I be worried? Stand resolute. Look sharp. Punish transgressions. Punch it. Follow the horizon. For glory. Face me. Never submit. I'm just making everything big. I guess I should have had the Kato support. Yeah, Kato should have supported Mentro the Stones. And then Mentro the Stones support this other 2-2. Two -two, turn that into a 4-4. Four -four. Basically make, make everything large, but... Obviously we had that one. Okay. Not a hush deck. I could definitely see keeping that other Tarek. Just, you know, like Tarek, Riven, these are some cards that are difficult to kill. So I like keeping them. The good. Stalking Shadows. And they had four options. I'll show the hunters. Huh. You know, like you look at this and you think go hard. We'll have to see what they really are. Undying. I guess right now I'm just kind of going like quick attack to copy over because you know, I want to copy something over to get you know like to make it easier to level up the Tarek. Um, but I don't re really want to use the weapon hilt in case they kill this Riven. I want I want another Riven, and Transfusion doesn't copy over. Okay, so that just kills that thing. I'm a people person. That's fine. Uh, I was hoping for overwhelm, but I guess I'll take plus two, plus zero. Which I guess plus two, plus zero is probably better. Anyway, you're bluffing. I'm glad it wasn't crumble though. I was kind of scared that they were going, you know, I played Tarek, they were going to crumble, kill the Tarek with that.
So this is gonna be so shakedown's pretty awesome. So it's permanent vulnerable. So they'll likely be able to kill the Taric the next turn. I need just a moment. All right, so I can play. I can double spell with like Ballista, Riven, or I guess maybe more like Drummer, Reaver, and then like one of these things. Or obviously, I could just attack right now. Um, the problem with playing stuff first is, is another Twisted Fate, like Twisted Fate Red card. So this would be four, nine, twelve. Right now, it's twelve damage. Lost I think I play other stuff. Obviously, hope no Twisted Fate red card, but. Sacrifice for a greater cause. That's just fine. I'm glad I played something. Alright, so we're gonna overwhelm. You. My wards bring power to And quick attack. You. There is nowhere left to go. Then I'm gonna. Gonna go ahead and play this Blade of the Exile on a Taric. I'm gonna have Taric copy the Blade of the Exile over to the Glory Seeker. So yeah, as long as they don't kill the Taric right now. A master work of destruction. And then of course the drummer will give the Rune Weaver. Okay, they got another blocker. So let's see. Yeah, so they can stay alive. Unyielding. So little to ask. So I, I would not have killed them if I would have just if I would have just gone immediately to attacks, I wasn't killing them anyway. But at least this, you know, this way we're taking out a 4-3 and a 5-3 and we're putting them down to, like, the same life total. They're going to be able to kill Tarek, unfortunately. Yeah, I did, I did end up having the one extra mana, so yeah, I guess I probably should have gone with Riven instead. I was thinking that I was going to go, because I, I did play the Blade of the Exiles, I didn't play the Rune Weaver. <clears throat> so yeah, I should have gone Riven. But I, I was thinking I was going to double spell the two of those uh, two drops and then two spells, but I decided to play the Blade of the Exile instead of the other three one. If I don't block, I could die to atrocity. That's kind of the problem here. Is if, if I don't block, I die to atrocity. Approach, savage. So how big of a deal is that? I don't know. That could be a big deal. Looks like that'll do. There we go. I know what I must do. All right, two and two. Okay, we're playing against some deep, some non-Targon again. Love it. All right, we have the attack token on the even turns. I really want 
One drop, Taric. Yeah, I really want one drop, Taric. Okay, there we go. One drop, Taric. Now we need to figure find a three. Ours is the one true light. Okay, I didn't find a three. Oh, we drew the three. Ah, uh, so this didn't work out for me. We drew the three. So, you know, <clears throat> I need to have Pell Cascade for next turn with Taric. So I can't, I can't actually play the three mana card right now. Don't worry. But I wish, you know, I wish I'd rather, ha like, I'd rather have the Iron Bliss in play than the Legion Drummer. Um, let's see. So we're gonna have go this route. Shatter that. Never submit. So it just basically means the one one doesn't get to kill this, but they'll have Dead Bloom Wander will be able to block that. Car for them. Okay. Get them deep pretty fast. Oh man, they're willing to pass to me. Uh, it's gonna be bad. Like Jaw Hunters, you know, I'm not protecting against Jaw Hunters. Okay, not Jaw Hunters. That's good. Might is my best card. Can we draw Might? Might. Might. Ah. Okay, let's see. So if I play something pre-combat, they are probably going to play, like, Devourer of Depths. I guess I'm, they're at 18. Without Might, I'm not going to be able to kill them this turn. Victory requires a sharp blade. No devourer. To protect all. Face me. Shatter them. I give you muscle. There is nowhere left to go but up. Alright, we got him down to one. Can we finish the job? This could be... This could be difficult to get another point of damage in. Two free sea monsters here. If they have like Nautilus plus other cheap sea monsters, they could have that. Oh, one's a Terror of the Tines. Okay. Ideally, I'll be able to just, you know, not not cast any of the spells and just cast the three units, right? Our, our three units cost seven total mana. I got seven total mana. So ideally, you know, like we're going to try to go wide and then open attack. And then have like these spells for after open attack. Admire me later. That's what we would like. Um, we did see that they tossed one. Oh yeah. All will 
We did see that they did toss one atrocity. To serve the greater good. Hey, Andrek, welcome from the YouTube channel. No mercy for heretics. I hope they don't have another atrocity in their hand currently. The world yeah, glad to have you here. I always love people being here and, and talking in chat and everything. Glad to have you here. Okay, so we're going to uh, try to finish it out here. How are we going to do that? We're going to copy... Quick attack you. Let's copy this over. Give this. Oh, I don't want to get the plus two because I want it. I need half four mana for double transfusion. Just in case. Have like withering whale and stuff like that. You're like there, yeah, those kind of cards. Cool, we can try to beat these kind of cards. It's not atrocity, so that's good. All right, that should do it. Rune Weaver getting it done. Okay, three and two. These gems aren't just for show. And <laughs> just like just like no more from the last couple of days, you play like the Aphelios Targon deck, you lose, you play against something else, you win. That's how it kinda has been. And that's what happened here with our Riven Taric deck. That was really nice not playing against Hosh and all the, the awesome stuff that Aphelios can do makes life a lot easier playing against regular like bilge water and shadow owl cards with our list i was i was pretty happy with everything like there wasn't really anything that i didn't like culling strike didn't uh i guess culling strike didn't always look the best but i think it's it's necessary you know like that would have been nice to have it to have it to kill aphelios whenever we played against it before but you know aphelios zoe stuff like that it's probably necessary um yeah, like our, our deck is, it, it's powerful and it can win a lot of games, as we saw um, there with like our, our last three. But when you play against a deck with Hush and Aphelios, it's just going to be pretty tough to beat. And that's just, that's just life. And that's okay. That's just how it is. Um, can't beat everything, but uh, it's not bad. And, you know, like Tarek is awesome. Riven also very good, but especially Tarek with this deck really makes this deck shine. So that's Riven Tarek running it back there. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button and leave those comments. If you have been playing this Riven Tarek deck yourself, let me know how has it been going for you. Or if you've just been playing um, other kind of Tarek decks or Riven decks, I'd love to hear about them. Just love seeing those comments on YouTube. So, you know, uh, please leave those. But um, that's it here for Riven Tarek, though. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.